You came right on time. It's time to lose weight, eating more food. I recently posted a video all about how I figure out how much to eat in terms of how many grams of protein and fats and carbs to maintain my weight. I feel like I didn't emphasize enough those numbers and charts were not for weight loss. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how I would manipulate my macros for weight loss. But before I could even get into the macros, I just have to, I just gotta say it. I've made the mistake of saying, if someone eats protein and fats, it can help keep them full and satiated longer. And while yes, eating protein and fat can make someone feel less hungry, I haven't emphasized that people don't just eat because they're hungry. Most people don't become overweight because they are starving. I think a lot of people nowadays are eating because they are stressed, anxious, bored. It's a social thing. It's a habit. It's a habit when I sit down to watch TV, I got a bowl of popcorn. So people aren't just eating because they're hungry. One of the commonalities between people who have lost weight and maintain their weight loss is those people have said that they had to kill their old self a little bit aggressive. With the idea of being similar to if an alcoholic goes to AA and becomes sober, they can't go back to hanging out with the same friends, being in the same environment, going to the same restaurants, this, that same crowd of people. Otherwise, they can easily fall back into it. So for the people who lost weight and maintained it, they had to create a new identity. I can give macros to suppress someone's hunger, but I can't give macros to fulfill people's stress, anxiety, boredom, social events. So that is where we have to create these new hobbies, new habits, new boredom strategies to make it so when we have those moments, we don't do what our old selves would have done did. We gotta kill our old identity. Okay, so as far as macros goes, I went very much in detail on proteins, fats, and carbs in the previous video. So I'm not gonna rehash that part. I'll link that video below. But as far as calories goes, this is the chart I put up on the previous video from health.gov showing their recommendation on weight maintenance. But if someone's trying to lose weight, then I would lower these numbers by a little bit. You guys, nowadays, People seem to be getting offended by everything you say. You know, politics, gender, religion, sex, and the word calories. I swear, I use the word calories, people act like I just used the F-bomb. I understand calories aren't the best measurement for how our bodies are using the fuel, but it is the universal word people use to talk about food intake. So I'm gonna use the word calories, and that's, that's what we're gonna do and it's gonna be okay. Weight loss comes from one of two things, either removing processed foods and eating real whole foods, switching the kind of calories someone's eating, 2,000 calories of pizza versus 2,000 calories of ground beef and eggs, same amount of calories, though what matters more than the calories is the nutrients. Some people, they can lose weight just switching the quality of their calories, but if that isn't enough, then the other way weight loss comes is by having less calories. When people first start going low carb, initially they may see a lot of weight loss because carbohydrates hydrate the cells. For the first week, two weeks, maybe even a month, someone may see a lot of weight loss, but it might not be fat, it may just be the body flushing out water. And if someone continues to see weight loss, it may be because when people eat protein and fat, they naturally tend to undereat. So people may be like, oh my goodness, this low carb diet is so amazing. I didn't track my calories, ate until I was comfortably full, and I lost a ton of weight the first month. But after some time, people will usually find they run into a weight loss plateau and they're like, what the heck is this? I lost a bunch of weight in the first month or two, and I haven't lost even a pound in several months. I mean, just yesterday, I had someone come to me who was eating 950 calories a day, and they weren't losing weight. So the only way for this person to lose more weight is to eat even less. But after a month or so, when their basal metabolic rate has dropped, metabolism has slowed down, and their body gets used to having that small amount of food, they'll hit another weight loss plateau. So then to lose weight, they'll have to eat even less. And I don't let that happen. 
So what I do with people one-on-one -on -one is I will take them through two phases to lose weight. Phase one is boost metabolism phase. So we're gonna eat more food, have more nutrients that can help our hormones and our organs function more appropriately. And then phase two, lose weight. So an example, let's say we have 49 year old Brian, who's a semi-active male. To maintain his weight, he'd wanna have about 2,500 calories just as a rough idea. Again, I would just use these numbers as a good starting point. I personally don't say, okay, these are the perfect calories and I need to hit these numbers. It's just a good ballpark range. And I know some people think that when you eat a more nutrient dense animal based diet, you require less calories or fuel. You know, that might be true a little bit, but I still don't think if someone eats one pound of meat in a day, they're getting in enough potassium or vitamin A or all the different nutrients they need in the right quantities. So I would still make sure I'm eating enough food that gives me all of the nutrients in the right quantities that I need. So phase one, boost metabolism. If I'm 49 year old, semi-active Brian, and I'm currently eating 1200 calories and I'm not losing weight, then what I would do to boost my metabolism is I would very gradually increase my food intake. And I say very gradually because most people, when they're naturally under eating, it's because they are so full and so stuffed that they don't wanna eat any more food. So if I were to say, take what you're currently eating and nearly double it to hit that maintenance level calories, people are like, I am so full, I can't even think about eating anymore. But if we just add a small 50 calories, someone's likely not going to feel that much more full and their body will adapt to this small, just tiny extra amount of food that they're likely not going to gain weight. So I would approach the calorie increase in this way to not gain weight and to boost metabolism. If I'm starting at 1200 calories, then for the next week or two, I'd wanna have an additional 50-ish calories. After a week or two, I'd have another 50-ish calories. After a week or two, again, adding in another small amount of food. Not an additional 50 calories each day from the previous day day, 50 calories each day from the previous week. So it could take several months to increase calories, but I just keep doing this process for however long it takes until I've either started gaining weight or reached my maintenance level calories. So for this person's example, about that 2,500 calorie number. You would be surprised by how many people lose weight as they do this process because you'd think if I eat more, then I'd gain more, which is true up to a certain extent, which is why if someone does keep increasing their calories and they end up finding that at 2,350 calories, they start gaining weight, then I wouldn't keep going up to that 2,500, that maintenance calorie number for this example. Like I said, the calorie chart numbers aren't very accurate anyway. So if someone gets to only 2,350 and they're starting to gain weight, then that's where we would move into phase two. But even still, people may find that when they are increasing their food intake, they can lose weight. Their body now has more nutrients to help with its hormones, to help with sleep, to help with thyroid function. And so people may notice as they eat more food, they're starting to have more energy to regain their hair, have higher testosterone because they're having more fuel that has nutrients in it that build our bodies. And when we have more food, we have more fuel, we have more energy, we end up walking and moving and moving our bodies more and burning more calories. If we calorie restrict the heck out of our bodies, our bodies will adapt to being able to function off a small amount of food. So when we give our bodies more food, it relaxes. It's like, ah, oh, I can start releasing some of this adipose tissue because I no longer have to be in starvation mode. I was holding on to this fat stored for backup in case I was starving and I was going to die. But now that I know I'm going to have this continuous supply of food, I can release this stored fat. All right, so phase one is boosting metabolism by slowly, very gradually increasing food intake. I may lose weight along the way, but more likely than not, I'm gonna start feeling better, having more energy, sleeping better, and just functioning overall better now that I have more nutrients. Phase two, weight loss. Once I've reached the maintenance level calories or the I started gaining weight number, then I want to reduce my calories overnight by 15 to 20%, depending on the person. 
So if I'm 49 year old Brian, and after several months, I finally get to the 2,500 maintenance level calories, then overnight, I'd wanna reduce my calories by 15%. So quickly, I'm having 375 less calories a day, and I'll see weight loss. So I'd eat that 2,125 calories for 30 to 60 days, and after the month or two, I would go back to phase one and slowly increase my calories to 2,500, and then when I wanna lose weight again, pull it back down and do phase two, removing more calories to lose more weight, and I just keep repeating the cycle until I hit my weight loss goal. Now the most obvious question is, but if I increase my calories again, won't I just regain the weight? But we have to remember when we are decreasing the calories, it's at a much quicker pace than when we are increasing the calories. Phase one, when we increase, it's only 50-ish calories at a time. So 50 calories a day times seven days of a week, we're only eating about 350 more calories in the entire week. Whereas when we decrease the calories, we're doing 375 calories less each day times seven days of the week. That's 2,625 less less calories in the week. That's basically fasting one day of the week. I was eating about 1200 calories a day and now I eat about 2400 calories or more a day and it took me about eight to nine months to get my calories up higher without gaining weight. And so the increase is very gradual, but then the weight loss, the rip down of calories is very fast. And we only stay in the phase two for about 30 to 60 days and then return back to phase one. The reason I don't want to stay in phase two for very long is because if I were to eat that 2,125 calories repeatedly over and over and over again, my basal metabolic rate is going to drop, my metabolism slow down, and then I'll hit a weight loss plateau. My body's gonna adapt to that amount of food. So then to lose more weight, I have to eat less food. And then eventually again, my body will adapt to that and it will hit a weight loss plateau. So to lose more weight, I have to eat less food. And this is how the person got to the 1,200 calories. So rather than starting at 1,200 calories and having to dig ourselves out of that hole to get up to 2,500, I'd rather just go down to 2,125 and then slowly increase my calories up to 2,500 again because it's gonna take a lot less time than going all the way back down to 1,200 and having to come out of that. And in the process as well, by eating 2,125 calories, that's a plenty amount of food where someone should not experience the tanked thyroid and hormones, metabolism, low energy, sleep, etc. I ask that if you've ever gotten value out of these videos and I've helped you out, help me out. Make sure to subscribe. I hope you have a happy day. If you're looking to book a coaching call, there's a link in the description and I'll see you in the next one.